Hey everybody, I'm Lance Koike, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make a super quick, super simple breakfast that I actually, I make it every single day. All right, so to start, I got, a, I got my pans out, pots out, I got all my food products out of the uh, fridge here, and I got my coffee that I gotta finish. So I'm gonna turn this pan on. We have an electric stove. It goes from levels one to 10, and I normally put it on six. It's gotta heat up a little bit while I do that. I'm gonna grab some chicken. Now this has been prepped already. We got some rotisserie chicken and Allison pulled it all off the bone. So I'm gonna grab a fork. I'm just gonna scoop it onto this pan. And so instead of having to uh, you know, reheat in the microwave separately, I'm just gonna reheat it directly on the pan. And I'm gonna make enough for the two of us. That should be good. Spread that around. So I just spread it around in the pan so that it gets good, even coverage here. Um, and then I'm done with this. So put it away. Nice. I also like rosemary, so we're gonna pull that out as well. So now while this heats up, I start prepping other things. First thing, my vegetable of this meal is usually just raw carrots. I just start eating them. I like to finish my coffee first though. Because the sweetness of the uh, carrots really interferes with <laughs> how good my coffee tastes. Um, so, I'm gonna start chomping on that. Let this heat up. I wanted to make a little bit of noise. I'm gonna put some grapeseed oil just to kind of lube up the pan, give it a little bit more flavor. That way when the oil heats up, I'll hear it and I'll kind of know, hey, this is starting to be at temp. You might want to put some eggs in soon so that you don't ruin it. I'm definitely going to put salt and definitely going to put pepper on there. I'll prep my egg carton by even just opening it up. I'm going to, I've been using three with a little extra meat. And then I'm gonna get one here for Allison too. And then once I pull those out, I just put this away. So this is what our pan looks like. I spread all the pulled chicken around. And we're just gonna wait until this oil underneath here starts to make some noise. And then we'll spin it around. You can get a little crusting um, with the pan heat. So it gives you a little bit more flavor as well. I also like to have oatmeal with everything. so. We're gonna start prepping that. I don't generally cook it because I feel like it's done too quickly, but I'll just pour a little bit of water in because I'm only gonna have a little bit of oatmeal. That should be good. Just a super tiny bit. Something kind of like this level here. And we just keep eating carrots until this is ready. So I'm starting to hear some sizzling. I'm still eating my carrots. I also like to have about 16 ounces of water um, with this. So I'll start sipping on that stuff just cause I'm trying to save time. I don't want to spend all morning cooking here. Um, I can inspect this a little bit, but I know by the sound that I don't have any browning on the chicken yet. So I'm just gonna let it sit a little bit longer. Um, I don't want the oil splash to get crazy. So we'll have to keep an eye on it. At this point though, I might start putting in some rosemary. I've got some fresh rosemary and it's kind of uh, hearty and <laughs> it tastes a little bit better when it's a little bit cooked. Um, so we're gonna make sure it gets some time in the heat here. I just pick it off with my hand, easy enough. This is a nice low calorie no calorie way to get some flavor. And I kind of like to put a lot in. I don't want a hint of rosemary. I want the whole thing. So we can put this away. Okay. 
Wonderful. And it's starting to move around. I'm starting to get <laughs> a little bit of an explosion underneath the meat, so we're gonna just mix it around slightly. This will also help distribute the oil that I poured in. Um, and there's a little bit of oil off the chicken, especially since there's some dark meat in the whole chicken that I put on here. So that will also come out and distribute. And you can use it, it uses it, or we use it as a cooking oil. Um, keeps the friction down and gives some flavor. Now, you can save time by not doing this crisping feature. Oh man, that rosemary. <laughs> um, you can save time by just, you know, saying, I'm just gonna heat it up. I want it to be not very crispy. Uh, but I kinda like the crispy, so I'm gonna cook it a little bit longer. Oh yeah, that rosemary. It's gonna be good. And I generally eat carrots until my eggs are done. All right, this is probably okay. Now, as it's been heating, the pan is gonna to be too hot to cook eggs. You need more heat to heat up the meat than you need to cook eggs. Eggs are very sensitive. Their uh, chemical structure changes really easily. So, what we gotta do, take our non-stick pan and move it off the direct heat. This heat is super intense, and what it does is it just turns on max you know speed here and then rests and that resting temperature is what gives you your uh, intensity on the dial it pretty much just never turns off if you uh, turn it up to 10 but that's too much too much for eggs so we are going to I have to move the chicken to one side put my spoon over there so I don't place it on the counter and it messes everything up and then I just crack on the flat surface. I don't like cracking on the rim because I feel like it gets more uh, eggshell in there. And hopefully this will be pretty painless here. I do my best to hit pretty hard, break them right in half, and I'll even scoop out the egg like this. Um, but if I, can, if I can do that, if I have pretty good halves, I can just stack them all here. And I can hold it all while I do the other ones. There we go. There we go, and then one more. So yeah, I don't know, this is probably about, I did get some shell there, I'll have to grab. Um, this is probably about 10 ounces of chicken and four eggs. For the two of us. Oh, I got another shell that wants to fall in, so I'm gonna not use that one. There's one. There's two. The um, the other shell tends to stick to the other shells <laughs> very well, so try. You're usually not gonna use your hands to pull it out. It's just not as effective. Um, all right, so. You can see if you look in the pan here that this is starting to cook already. And you can see that because the white is turning white. Uh, so I'm gonna break it all up and I'm gonna scoot it around. Now it's been off the heat for so long that it's not really gonna keep cooking. So I'm gonna have to move it back to the heat, but I try to get it kind of homogenous, a little more homogenous. What is the actual word for it? Colloid? I want it to be a nice, evenly distributed colloid. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Colloid. Uh, but we'll do that, and then we'll just move it over to the heat again. And now, all we're doing is putting it on the heat, bringing it off the heat. Putting it on the heat, 
bringing it off the heat. I don't turn the heat down. What I do is I let it heat up and then we pull it off so the bottom row, the bottom layer there doesn't overcook. And instead the heat stays, the heat from the pan, the heat that stays in the pan is what cooks the eggs. There's a really interesting video from Gordon Ramsay that I watched so many years ago, uh, but he's cooking eggs, showing you how to cook scrambled eggs. And that's, that's basically the method that I'm doing here. The, the eggs are just so susceptible to the heat that you, you can only get a nice kind of, oh, I want to say fluffy, but I don't want to put any milk in this. Um, but you can only get that if you're cooking pretty low and you've got a pot or a pan that's going to hang on to the heat. It's not all bad to, you know, overcook them, but I just, I don't like the taste nearly as much. So I do this little effort. Um, I can keep moving back and forth. And if I keep stirring, then I'm not going to uh, burn anything. I will, uh, if you keep stirring and you keep it on the heat, I do think that it will burn. Um, so you do still have to take it off the heat. But if I keep stirring now, I can cook faster and these will be done pretty soon. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have to put my phone down here. Um, I'm gonna put some salt and pepper on this, but when I do that, I need to not leave it on the burner. If you go and do anything while you're cooking this, you can see that right there, this like bubbling. It's cause the eggs are burning on the bottom. Um, if I go do anything, I need to take it off the burner and then uh, do my steps. So I'm gonna do the pepper here, put that away. And since it's off the burner, I don't have any intense heat. My eggs will taste a little better. So then we're here and I just distribute. Still got a rosemary in there, which is still kind of cooking and reducing or releasing some of its aroma and flavor into the eggs. You can, if you inspect the eggs, they're still kind of goopy, so they're definitely not done. So we want to keep cooking. just continuously scrape up all these uh, little sides. One thing you can do if you feel like you need more surface area to cook, you spread everything out. And if you feel like uh, I just left it on the burner too long and I need to fix something, then you scoop everything together and off to the side. The center part of the pan is the hottest part. So that will protect uh, the eggs from burning. So I will generally not stop stirring while it's on the burner, but when it's off, I might actually leave it, especially at the end here, I'll kind of distribute. Uh, so I think the least cooked parts are on the bottom and then I might just let it sit just for a sec. Um, you'll get this more homogeneously uh, cooked kind of like continuous layer. Um, and that's, that's kind of like the outside of a, uh, omelet. That's kind of what you're going for there. I just do it scramble style cause omelets require <laughs> more skill. <laughs> and yeah, I 
think that's pretty good. So I am now, I've decided my eggs will be fine. They don't need to go back on the burner here. I am gonna let them sit and cook for a second. But next, we're gonna take the water for the oatmeal and we're gonna start cooking it. I'm not gonna need the lid. So I'm gonna set that off to the side. And my eggs are done, so I'm gonna take my last carrot, put my carrots away. And then I've got my oats ready. I'm gonna change the size of that burner. Got my oats ready, I'm just gonna open this up. To minimize dishes, I've learned to do it in this order. So I've got this. I'm gonna give uh, a little bowl to Allison. So about one egg and I don't know, two ounces of chicken, three ounces of chicken. these tiny little plates that I like to scoop myself on because uh, it helps things cool down a little faster you have more surface area exposed and that becomes extra important with the oatmeal which is just molten hot and I like to use this spoon to kind of since it's soft and it's not gonna damage my pan I like to use it to scrape all the food as much food as I can get pretty easily because it makes cleaning simpler. Now I don't want to cool this pan right away because I don't want it to start warping. So we're just going to let it sit. It's not too hot but we're just going to let it sit for a little bit longer and then I'll put it in the uh, sink and soak it. And our water, this tends to work pretty quickly. Our water is just about boiling over here. Yep, boiling, so now I'm gonna put just a little bit of oatmeal in. I poured in a little more water than I normally use, but these oats are going to be uh, a little runny, a little wet. It's not, I don't like the taste as much, but it does clean faster, so I like to do that now. <laughs> And then we gotta turn this heat down right away, down to a simmer. And I just use the same spoon to mix it up. And then it's just gotta sit there for five to eight minutes while it cooks, which is about the time it takes to eat your eggs. <laughs> Eggs are about done, which means I can either wait for this to cook off some more of the water. There's definitely too much water. I've never used this much water. Normally what I would do is I would put too much oatmeal in with the water, but then I'd have a lot to eat and I'm just not that hungry. I probably don't need the calories. So I'm gonna try to pour off some of the water and then I'm gonna move it onto my plate here. That actually worked better than I thought it would. So I'm gentle with the spoon. The metal on metal can scratch your pan. So I don't want to damage it. And then all I'm doing here is I got a small plate full of oatmeal that's molten hot. So I spread it out and this is gonna be a little too hot yet to put water in, but I turned the uh, burner off. And then I like a little bit of honey. I don't mix it in and I don't pour it on. We have this awesome 309 Manuka honey from New Zealand from one of my clients' uh, family's businesses. Um, so I just put a very 
little bit on the edge there. That's even probably a little more than I normally use. And then obviously I'll lick the knife. Mmm. Put the honey away. And now this is too hot to eat. The way that I speed that up is I just kind of bring it up. I blow on it because that's how thermodynamics works. You do the same thing with uh, soup. Uh, if the bowl is really hot, you pick some out and then cool that down and then you put it back in and it's kind of like relatively it's like an ice cube it's not as cold as an ice cube obviously but that's how you start to you increase the surface area where things can evaporate and cool down and then you re homogenize again that's the third time i think i've used that word um what else so after breakfast i kind of like to have some tea so i'm, I'm gonna prep some of that too tea's full of all sorts of good stuff so it's not too bad to have as long as you're not overdoing the caffeine. I'm going to fill my kettle up to the minimum because I don't really need any more than that. And then one of Allison's clients actually gave her this super nice Earl Grey tea that I have all the time. It's uh, loose leaf, so I've got to scoop it in. Whoa. And I don't put too much in. Again, I, you know, I just had coffee. I don't really need the caffeine. I feel like I need the caffeine, but I probably shouldn't rely on it. And I just set it in there, and then I can put the tea away. Now, usually if this is not cooled down, I might start on dishes, but this will usually cool down pretty quickly. Just with the timing of everything, right? So we did the eggs and then we ate the eggs while the thing cooked. Um, so it's been sitting on the low simmer for a while. So it is hot, water holds heat, uh, but it'll cool down. Once it stops steaming quite so much, then my, my scared little tongue is okay to try some. And that's okay. So the last thing I did want to show you outside of my tea here is when I'm eating this, I put the honey on the side of the plate, right? What I want is I don't want to mix it in because then you're just going to throw these sugars into your oatmeal and you're not really going to taste them at all. So what I like to do is spill oatmeal. Um, I like to take a scoop put it in my mouth, and then take a little scoop of honey. Put that right on my tongue. Then it's delicious, but I'm not overdoing it, right? I don't have a large volume of stuff like that. So when we get honey, we can get really nice stuff like this 309 honey because we're not burning through it so fast. Like we've, <laughs> we got this carton from them before the pandemic and we've <laughs> it's still here <laughs> we're still <laughs> still eating it and that's kind of the secret to eating healthy is you gotta you can't eat to make yourself happy which is a whole deeper conversation that we're not ready for in this video but uh that's pretty much it sounds like my water's good Turn that off, pour this in, and then I'll just, you know, it's again, it's the same kind of layer thing. I'm gonna let this steep and cool down while I eat my oatmeal, and then I can move this pot to the sink, get it ready for soaking so that it's easier to clean later on. And by the time I'm done with this, it might actually be good enough to just knock it out and then I don't have to worry about them, those dishes later on. That's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. If you learned something, hit the like button and subscribe to be notified when I release new videos. Uh, if you want more kitchen stuff to watch, I've got a whole playlist of stuff like that. Or if you need something different, maybe afterwards you got to get some gut motility uh, movement going on. I've got a whole mobility circuit playlist that you can do. It's called Limber Up with Lance.
Yeah.